morning and welcome to church beyond the walls. Thank you for joining us this morning as we lift up the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Thank you for those that are joining us online. Thank you for those that are here in the building. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. And we welcome you on this morning. Go with us as we go into prayer. Father, we love you and we glorify your name. You have been so great, so marvelous, so faithful, so loyal, so dependable. You keep on doing great things for us, God. And so we just want to take this time to magnify and to glorify your name. You are the God of the entire world. And we acknowledge your presence. We acknowledge your power. We claim your peace, oh God. We just love you. We appreciate you, Lord God. We ask that you would meet us here. Deliver us here, oh God. Set us free, oh God. Work in our lives, oh God. We need you, Lord God. And we realize without you, we cannot do anything. We wouldn't even be here. So we just give you all of the glory.
Thou, O oh Lord, bringest me out when I'm in trouble. Hallelujah. So grateful for your presence on today. The Bible says that the grass withers and the flower fades. But the word of our God will stand forever. God, you've been so good. You have been our Ebenezer. You have always been good. You are the tri stone. You are the true stone. You are a sure stone. You are the rock that has been cut without hands. And we glorify you. You knock everything down. Oh God, you said if we would fall on you, we'd be broken. But if you fall on us, we would be ground into pieces. Oh God, help us to fall on you so that we can be broken from the past, <laughs> broken from our failures, broken from the entrapments and the entanglements of uh, bad upbringing. Break us and make us and mold us and fill us and have your way in our lives, oh God. Give us a word from the Lord. We need you. I need a word, a rhema word, not just any old type of word, but we need something that is conducive to our situation. We give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to read a couple of verses out of the word of God, then we're going to move to Hebrews. So what we want to do is want to go to uh, Acts 7. We want to look at the 19th verse, and we're going to read down to the 22nd verse, and then we're going to move to Hebrews 11, 23. We want to look at Acts, the 7th chapter, and we want to look at verse 19 down to 22 and then we want to go to Hebrews 11 23 amen hallelujah the scripture says this that this man dealt treacherously and just to give you a little context this was a new king that did not know Joseph the Bible says he did not know Joseph and he could care less about Joseph Joseph was good but Joseph is dead I'm in charge and I don't regard Joseph uh -huh. And so the text says, this new uh, king dealt treacherously with our people and oppressed our forefathers, making them expose their babies so that they might not live. Hold me right here. But the text says, right in the middle of trauma, right in the middle of struggle, right in the middle of the burden, right when it's bitter, right in the middle of the storm, right when I feel like giving up, right when I feel like throwing in a towel, the text says, but at this time, Moses, the sweet little baby boy, was born. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And, and watch the text, and was well pleasing to God, Brother Sam, and he was brought up in his father's house for three whole months. But when he was put out, because he was getting too big. Now, let me just give you something real quick. A baby don't stay a baby forever. And if we would just have a little bit of seed of hope, watch me here. A seed of hope, if we water it and we and we and we coddle it and and, and, and and protect it, it'll grow. What am I saying here? Don't despise the day of small things. A small beginning is just what it is. A small beginning. A baby boy dealing with all of, listen, how can a baby boy help us with man-sized problems? But when God is in it, there is no limit. We call him a baby to do a man's job. Did you hear me? And a baby doing a man's job. So the text says this baby boy was born, right? And then it says, but then he went over and he was set out in the Nile River. Pharaoh's daughter took him away and brought him up as her very own son, and Moses was learned in all of the wisdom and all of the Egyptians and was mighty in word and deed. This dude was off the chain. The Egyptian nation was the ruling power, not of a region, but of the world. He had, he had a, I went over a gentleman's house last night and I saw 
they had an associate, and then they had an MBA, and then the wife. So, 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 so Moses had every degree possible because we're going to find out that God was with Moses, and God is concerned about your preparation. Let's go to Hebrews eleven. 23. Hebrews 11, 23. We're going to preach today. Hebrews 11, 23. Hebrews 11, 23. Uh, when you have it, you just, I'll, I'll wait for you for a few seconds and just go, go. We're going to go right there. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, 23, the text simply just says that it seems to be abrupt, but it's not. It's a connection by or and. And is a, a connecting to what happened prior or it is putting two things together and, and bridging the gap. But the text says by faith or and by faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child. Notice the previous passage of scripture. It says God was pleased with Moses. But this parents, his parents here, Sister Mo says that uh, the parents saw that he was beautiful or this kid is different. He's not your ordinary run. He's not the runt of the group. He's exceptional from birth. All right. And they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he looked forward to the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing who him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he who destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea uh, by dry land, whereas the Egyptians attempting to do so were drowned. My trouble got me deliverance, but my enemies drowned in it. Just for a few moments, we want to continue our series. It's starting to happen. Amen. Amen. So grateful for your presence on today. We do realize that uh, 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 the weather has caught some of us. Um, and so we, 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 we have no problem with that. If you feel needed to, the, the need to stay home, that's fine. That's fine. And, and so we ask you to join us via social media. And those that are busy uh, at home and staying warm, you don't really need your fireplace because it's still warm out a little bit outside. But if you want to turn it on, just, or you got one of them fake fireplaces and it look like fire, and you just turn the heat all the way down and just so you can get the ambiance, go ahead and do that and you can watch us later via YouTube. But we are here and we want to hear a word from the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me just say something as we uh, move forward in our series. I'm so grateful for those that press their way through this uh, weather. That I want to remind us that God needs you. I, I, think, I think that's a very impressive Concept that actually that the God I said who has everything the God that knows the end from the beginning the God who is the El Shaddai the God who is the provider he he is complete by himself he needs nothing he he knows everything he cannot be stopped he cannot be closed in he is God. He's so high, you can't get over him. He's so wide, you can't get around him. And his feet, the Bible says, earth is his footstool. Heaven is it. He's up in the heavens and he's everywhere at the same time that God would need me. What a beautiful concept. What an amazing concept that God will put him in a place to need me. To need me. Watch this here. Not the best me, but just me. My God today, not the best me, 
but just me. Like, what am I saying here? The one where 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 uh, Abraham a Abraham Lincoln they were painting him, and he, you know what he said? Paint the ugly side of me. Paint the real side. Now some of us want to, want people to see uh, the best side, but beloved, who you are is who you are. And, and so he said, just paint the side with the warts and all. Let me tell you something. God is not afraid of you. And God wants to use you. And the thing about using you, it is the connecting point that makes you human. I think that we ought to, we ought to realize the benefit of being human. Human means I can relate to you. Uh, see, if we got to get cut to relate to somebody that's been cut. We've got to go through things to relate to people that's been through, but if I've never had a problem, I really cannot relate to you. And, and have you ever talked to somebody uh, about something that they have been only been educated by, but they had no experience? It hits a little bit different. But if you've been through what I've been through, I feel the confidence, listen, radiate from you, and that makes me settle down because you've been through what I've been, I've been through it, I've been there, Sometimes I've done that, but God brought me up out of it. So I'd rather talk to somebody that has experienced it. Let me hear, certifications give you education, but you are qualified by your experience. Did you hear certifications gives you education? That's cool, but I want to talk to somebody that has walked this thing out been there and done that. That's why I like to talk to older folks because they have done it, they have been there, and it's something about the, oh, oh baby, you're going to make it. You'll come through. I know it's rough, but I was right where you're at. I almost quit. I almost gave up. I almost threw in the towel, but, the, but, but God brought me through. God made a way. I was going to school and couldn't pay for it, but, but I found out they had grants, I found, and, and so God will make a way. So we want to deal with a person that has experience. Listen, that's cool you know something, but sit down. I want to talk to the person that got experience, you, 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 if you will. So we're looking at this particular passage. The Bible says, while in the middle of trouble, uh, they, they experienced a great season. They went down into Egypt. There was, they were fed in Egypt. But it seems that the Bible shows us different degrees. We, we go through blessings, we deal with trouble, we come out of them, but in everything that we go through, we go higher, we go deeper, we go wider, and God is concerned about your spiritual development. I have to tell you that you can never please God where you are at. That's good for now, but God is committed to your development. My God, today, I would love to have a full church right now. I would love that, but some people felt the need to stay at home. I'm not going to trip. It is what it is. I'm moving on, and when the weather gets better, come on and jump and jump on the ship. We'll wait for you. Let's go. But but there is development, and when you go through with not having so much, help me here today, there was a statement made, Brother Q, the man said, we've done so much with so little, now we can almost do anything with nothing. Did you hear what I said? We've done so much with so little. Now we can almost do anything with nothing. And little is much in the hands of God. You give it to God. Little, a little baby, a little inoperable baby is going to deliver God's people. That, 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 that concept just boggles my mind. So God needs you. God is the one that will qualify you to do what God has called you to do. Uh, he's looking for you, and I said this, that God has considered every possible mistake that you can make, and he said, I still want to use you. I want to use you. I want to use you. You are significant. You, listen, God has a particular purpose for your life or else you would not be here. Find out why he called you. Find out why he is saving you. Now look at the text as we go on. Look at the text. I want to just show you some things. Uh, the Bible says in 
Acts 7, 19, when Moses was born, immediately, this is interesting to me, it says that Moses was pleasing to God. I wrestled with that, Brother Q, because how can a baby who is yet, and I hate using this word because of the, 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 the connotations that it received, he, had, he, he was evolving. And, he, and what I mean, he was, he was going to become something. But God was very well pleased with a baby. His parents, on the flip side, in Hebrews 11, 23, said they saw that he was beautiful. They saw potential, but they really did not know where this baby boy was headed. What am I saying here? Uh, when a child comes into your life, realize that they are a gift from the Lord. I, I, I wrestle with this, Brother Q, because I thought being a parent and being older than my children, that qualified me because I've been here longer, I've done more things, but I found out my child actually is developing me. Oh my God, and being a pastor, you would think that because you are the leader, you've been through some things, you've been educated, you've been through some experiences, but baby, the church is what perfects the pastor. He's got to learn how to deal with different types of people, different mindsets, different attitudes. Watch this here. He's got to learn how to deal with different attitudes and cannot get an attitude. Did you hear what I said? Because he is being developed by the thing that is that he is developing. Did you hear what I said? So, so, so this is for the parents here. We have to learn our children. Moses was pleasing to God, and Moses was beautiful to his parents, Moses' parents had to learn how to deal with the package that God sent to them. You, you, you and whoever just came together, but children, according to the scripture, are a blessing from the Lord. Uh, listen, and, and if God allowed a child to make it here, what does that mean that God wanted them to be here? I have heard of couples who have, the one got their twos tied, another one had a vasectomy, but some type of way, help me God today, the, 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 the traffic, the freeway was opened up and God wanted them to be here. Beloved, God wants you to be here. God wants to get glory out of your life. I don't care what you've been through. I don't care who tried to block you. If God wants you to be here, nothing can stop you. And I don't care what the devil says. I don't care what the devil does. If God wants to use you, God will use you. Problems, issues, and all. I'm here to encourage you on today. Now, Moses from birth, watch this here, had everything he could possibly ever need to become everything that God had planned for him to become. Everything. You, do you realize that a little baby boy, little, that's why they call him a man child. He is a child, but he has every possible component to become a fully functional, grown man from birth. And beloved, while I'm here, the believer. The believer. I may not look like I always ought to look, Brother Q, uh, 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 Sister Q, Sister Q, uh, Sister Dietrich. I may not always look like I'm supposed to be. But the Bible says if you have the seed of God on the inside, do you realize in the seed of that new birth is the DNA to become everything that God has called me to be, to be victorious, to be more than a conqueror, to be a winner? It's all in my DNA. And over time, being watered. How do we water? Encouragement. How do we water? Through praise and worship. How do we water? As we are developing, watch this here. Help me here today. It, 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 see, see, a lot of us are trying to become what God has not called us to be. As a pastor, as people that we bump shoulders with, they cannot bring out of you what God has not already put in you. You have been enveloped with the purpose of God. You have been enveloped with the passions that God wants you to have. But a developer can only bring out the beauty that God has put within. What am I saying here? If there's something on the inside, that means I got a platform. That means there's shoes for that platform. I got a mic. I got a stage. I got an audience. And I can only do what God has. There was only one Jonah. There was only one David. There's, listen, there's only one Ezekiel. And glory to God, there is only one Brother Q. There's only one super.
superstar Brit. There is only one sister Renee. And baby, when you get to the place where God can use you, he will be pleased. But God looks beyond me, Sister Mo, and sees my need. God looks over me, and he is pleased. Let me just tell you something. I, I thought this was interesting, that in order for God to deal with me, he's got to overlook me. Did you hear me? You know why? Because I do some things that get on his nerves. I ain't the only one. Come on, trust me. I brought you out last time. Oh, God, I'm scared. Do you think God likes that? But God looks beyond all of my faults and sees my need. So there's some things that God does. I want to just tell you, God was pleased with Moses because of what? Number one, this is important. Write this down. Because what he had placed in Moses from birth. Think about that. It might be a small beginning. Might be a seed. But God sees the end of a matter. He, he beautifies what, everything that concerns me. You Listen, Bishop Blake says you look better in the future. And God treats me like I'm in the future. He talks to me like I'm in the future. What would change in your home? What would change if I dealt with my wife or based on her potential and not her partial development? What would change if I talk to my son where he's headed and not how he's acting? My daughter, where she's headed? And I know you dropped the ball. I know you messed up, but we're going there. I'm moving there. If I dealt with them where they are going, listen, I can only become when you, if you ready, if you put the bar like this and say, all I can do is come up here, all I can do is come here. But if I raise the bar to where God is taking them and I deal with you where you're headed. And the reason why God deals with me where I'm headed because he's given me the necessary tools to become where I am going. The Bible says imitate God because I have the very nature of God on the inside. God pulls from what he puts within. He brings out what he puts within. The text says that we have this treasure in earthen vessels. It is the excellency of God. You can do all things because God is on the inside. You can build big things. Have you noticed that small ants can build big old, uh, 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 big old, they just, they just do stuff. Say what? Colonies. Have you ever seen a small ant carrying a big old leaf? That makes sense. But within that, but with, but within that ant is the willpower. Within that ant is the industrial spirit. Within that ant is the tenacious grip to not quit. Listen, listen. Some of us have been given the gift of faith. It doesn't matter what it looks like on the end outside. They just function well in bad weather. Let me tell you, whatever you've got, if you just get around the right people and get around the right ambiance, you'll be everything that God has called you to be. And what's on the inside of a seed of grass is stronger than the mulch that's covering it up. Have, I think it's amazing. I, I used to do uh, landscaping, and we did well that made good money at it. Uh, I, I wish I could have somebody run a business for me and just collect the money from it. But, uh, but I might have to do the work. I ain't got time for that. But watch this here. Uh, uh, so it's amazing when you till the ground and you plant the seeds in the ground and you have to pack it, Sister Renee, with mulch and you got to wet it. It's muddy, it's murky, it's dark. Watch it, it's muddy, it's murky, it's dark, it's packed with stuff. And what is amazing how the seed goes into the ground and you got to cover it so that the devil won't strip the seed. So that birds who represent the devil, the devil, so they won't tear out the seed. And that's why you, I'm going to just get off cue. You got to protect your mind. When you hear a word from the Lord, don't let the devils take it from you. Don't let them stop. If, if I tell you God said you are victorious, hold on to it. So, so we dig up the ground, we break up the ground, we, we plant the seed in the ground, we cover the seed with several layers of mulch. But you know what I find? That what's in the seed has the power to push through all that packed down mud. Because what's on the inside of me is greater than what? What is on the inside? The Bible says greater is God on the inside of me than everything on the outside of me. I'm a winner. Watch this here. My winning is based on God. God said you have to be. So you got a little baby boy. Oh my God. An operable baby boy. A defenseless baby boy Moses. Wait a minute. For three months, he's in his parents' home, Brother Sam. Do you know what you put in your kids? I might not have a long time, but if you spend time, quality time, they may not forget it. 
What is the responsibility of a parent with a child? The Bible says in Psalms 127, uh, it says, except the Lord build a house, the laborers labor in vain, except the Lord watch the city, the watchers are watching in vain. And then it goes on to say that children are a heritage of the Lord. Their children are like a, 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 or a arrow in the hands of a warrior. Children are like a arrow in the hands of a warrior. Listen, my first developer is not my school teacher. Did you hear me? Stop putting, that's why some of our children fail because we're making the teachers and that's why the teachers losing their mind. And when your kid act a fool at school, don't be surprised because they act a fool at home. If you would train them at home, you can trust them to act right in public. I told my daughter, she flipped the skip on me, Brother Q. She said, she said, wait a minute. She said, my wife called me, I'm, I'm, I, and I'm always leery when I get in the room. Oh, gosh, what's wrong? What's wrong? My wife called me. You know what my wife said? She said, uh, uh, hey, how's your day going? She buttered me up. And, that, and it, I almost slipped and broke my hair. She, bust, she said, how, how was work? How's work going? I said, it's, it's, it's cool. You know, and it's Friday, so it's even better. I'm like, okay. Yeah, so um, she told me all sweet and how I like, I like it and all that. She said, uh, yeah, so your daughter... Um, I'm like, okay, what's going on with my daughter? Because as a father, fathers go in a protective mode. You, I mean, they said, especially our daughters. You, you, I'm telling you, now, now, now I, don't, I try not to cause problems, but if you mess with my kids, I, you're going you gonna to see another side of me. You're going to see, you're going to see David, little David, little King David turn into the Incredible Hulk, baby. I'll get green on you. I'll go green, and I'm not talking about the green they're talking about with the government. So she said, yeah, so your daughter, you know, I said, what's up with my daughter? She, she wanted to go somewhere. I'm like, okay, if she want to go where? Oh, it's going to be $20. $20? Okay. And then she says that she want to go to the football game, the first one of the, of the season. And, and Sister Deidre, I'm tripping. I'm like, wait, hold up. My daughter, wait, wait, wait. My daughter, who's in my mind, is still my little baby girl. Got the day. The little baby girl I put on my shoulder. The little baby girl I love. The little baby girl I want to protect. The little baby girl I want to provide for. My daughter wants to go to the football game. And this is Sister Renee. I'm thinking, I'm going like, okay. But she's 17. My father said, nobody's ever going to be good enough for her. I said, no. He said, you're not ready for her to grow up. I said, no. You know what he said? It's not that she's not growing up. Mm -hmm. He wow. said, you're not ready to grow up. Mm -hmm. Sister Renee, growing up is letting go. Mm -hmm. I'm not ready to let go. So I had to learn how to let her go. <laughs> Our job as parents is to invest quality time while we can. If my daughter doesn't fly, if my son doesn't function well, it's probably my fault. So I went into protective mode. I still ain't got it. Uh, my son needed his car worked on, brakes and all that stuff. So I was going to be dad. Go get it done. He was going to pay for it, but I was going to say, here's your bill. <laughs> I still might, I still might hook him up with a couple, cause it was a hefty bill. I might, I might throw him a couple, on, cause he been helping in the ministry. I might give him a hundred dollars to help him out, cause I felt bad for him. But, but I, I really, I was like, whoa! I said they gonna do you like that? I was like, I was trying to willing to give him a deal. Watch this here. So I was just going to go early in the morning on Saturday, Sister Renee, and go get the car fixed. And I even thought about getting it washed, and said, here you go. Be why? Because that's what parents do. Parents have the propensity to do a little more than they should. We just don't know how to let go. My father's in his 70s. He's still a father. They are protectors. It's on the inside. So, 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 so sometimes as parents, we get a little in our kids' business, I was gonna get it fixed. I said, I'm not gonna do that. I said, hey, hey, Sam, we gotta go to the, get your car worked. I said, get up. Uh, and so he was like, okay, cool. He came outside and then I said, 
I said, hey, you, you got your wallet? He said, oh yeah, I got it. I was like, I'm glad you got his wallet. <laughs> he said, oh, I got my wallet. And so he went and conducted business for himself. Why, what am I saying this here for? Because we are to train up our children. We are to aim our children so that if something happens to me, they can function well in a difficult world. And glory to God, good God Almighty, Moses was in his parents' home for three months and they taught him the word of God. They exhibited faith. The Bible says they refused to let their baby go and put him in the Nile River at that point. Excuse me, they were supposed to kill the babies. But what she did, and what this is, this boggles my mind, that a, a parent, Joshabed and Anaram, they refused to listen to the, to the, they were supposed to kill the baby. But the, but the Bible says that for three months, they said, I ain't doing what the king said. By faith, I'm going to disregard what the, what, what, the, what the king said. But the Bible says for three months, and you know how babies, if they latching on, they eating good, they start to get thick. They get thick cheese. And, and I love babies. Their breath smells so good for a little while. But they grow up, their breath starts to get bigger. I'm like, oh, they ain't got that baby breath no more. But this baby got bigger. This baby got bigger, Brother Jackson. The baby got bigger. But what am I saying here? What did his parents put in him, he never outgrew. What am I saying? When our parents, when we as parents model a life of faith, not a perfect life, but trusting in God, crying out to God. I don't, and listen, and telling and in front of our parents, if our parents in front of their children saying, you know what, God, I don't know what to do. Like King said, he said, I don't know what to do. Jehoshaphat said, I don't know what to do, but my eyes eyes are on you. That is not a sign of weakness. That's a sign of saying, God, I don't know what to do. But if you bring me out, I'll give you glory. That Listen, it, what's wrong with saying, I don't know, modeling a life of trusting and resting and relying on God. And when I dropped the ball, my father just told me something the other day. He, you know what he told me? And it hurt my heart. He said, you know, but it, 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 it rejoiced my heart. It rejoiced my heart. And But it showed me that my dad is a hero, but he's a real hero. He, if you cut him, he'll bleed. What, what, so my dad said, you know what? He, 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 I said, dad, you a great father. You always been a good father. And he said, I made some mistakes in my life. And then I'm, I'm saying, what do you, I tell, in my eyes, you can't do no wrong. But he, he, he told me, sister, he, he said, I didn't do everything right. But I love God. My father pursued God. He said, but I'm not perfect. I, and, but he, and he did me a favor. He said, I'm not. He, he, in other words, said, I wish I was the person that you believed me to be. And his prayer is, God, help me to be the one that he believes me to be. We always see this person in his life. But if we could just model a pursuit to God and raise our children and give them the best that we can give them. Why, we, why do I say the best we can give them? Because we all didn't get it all the way right. Our parents, were, did, they, did, they did the best they could. That's right. That's right. My father's parents died when he was 12. And you know what? I celebrate him. He raised his family, and all he had was just 12 years with his mother and father. I think he came out pretty darn all right. He didn't leave us and go get a loaf of bread and never come back. He stayed when he didn't know how to be a father. He learned on the job. That's why we got to take it easy on our parents. Stop blaming them. And I'm doing the best I can. Little by little, we're getting better. So, so this baby Moses was raised up. And then he was put in the Nile River. Oh, God, help me today. The Nile River was infested with crocodiles. They had what you call the Nile crocodile. You, 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 they said there are several deaths a year. Now, they have, a, they have an appetite. But you know what? They'll eat anything that gets in their way. They have 3,700 pounds per square inch of pressure. But this little baby boy was in the Nile River. Inoperable, listen, defenseless, but God had his hands on him. What am I saying? God's got his hands on you. So Moses was pleasing to God because of what God placed within. And watch this here. God dealt with Moses from his potential, not his partial development. I love that because God overlooks me. God overlooks a lot of things to deal with you. 
We ought to give him a little praise. We ought to give him, God, thank you that you don't see me for who I really am. You see me for where you're taking me. What, don't, don't you realize, he says, he says to Moses when he was growing, I said, I want you to strike this area. He said, the Lord says, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. What is God passing over? Uh, he's passing over my lies. He, he's passing over my mistakes. You ain't what you appear to be. You look good on Monday morning. You smell good, but at home you can be a trip. You know how I know because sometimes I'm a trip. But God looks beyond all my faults and he sees my need. I'm glad about that. So God deals with Moses from his full potential, not his partial development. And the Bible says in Ephesians, Ephesians 1, 6 through 8, Now all praise to God for his wonderful kindness to us and his favor that he poured out on us because we belong to his dearly beloved son. So overflowing is his kindness toward us that he took away all our sins. Not some of them, not the ones you asked for forgiveness for. The text says in Ephesians 1 and 7, God took away all of our sins, all of them, past, present, future, through the blood of his son. And if the blood can't cover it all, then I don't want it at all. Did you hear me? The blood covers all. And he showered down his richness of his grace for how well, and then how, how well we understand this. Now watch this here. It says, the text says in, in, in the King James system, where we are accepted in to be loved. Do you know why God accepts you, Brother Q? Because he sees you in his son. He said, he said, you get the benefits of the one you are connected to, the one that you are in. You are in Christ. You are in Christ, and because we're in him, we are accepted. So God looks past my partial development and sees me as if, as if I'm already there. Hallelujah to that. Hallelujah to that. Amen. So I'm approved by God because of what Christ did on Calvary. We are accepted by God because, of we, because we are in Christ. We have access to all of God because of Christ. And watch this here. How do I become like the Lord? By spending time with him. You are a product of your environment. Holiness, watch this here, is not the way to Christ. Christ is the way to holiness. So I'm approved by God. I'm accepted by God. I have access to God. God is working on me to make me acceptable. I can be accepted and not acceptable. Yet God gets over me because I'm in Christ. Now, Christ is working to make me acceptable to God. Don't you like that? So it, it ain't no sneaky business. I'm covered under the blood. I'm being changed. I'm building character under the blood, and I'm going to be changed because of the blood. It ain't a cover-up. I'm covering you so I won't destroy you. And while you're covered under the blood, God is working me things out in my life. So he deals with me where I'm headed and not where I am. Right? And then let me just say this, Christ is not ashamed of me. When you drop the ball, Christ is not ashamed of you. So God is pleased with this little baby boy because of his, this baby's full potential. What, what, what am I saying? I'm justified. What does that mean, justified? I'm declared righteous. God deals with me where I am headed, not how I am. Y'all know sometimes y'all get on your own daggone nerves. Sometimes I do some stuff that I just like, why did I do that? Because I thought I was better than I really am. Oh, I'm preaching better than just saying amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm preaching good this morning. I'm so glad y'all watching us on social media. I'm going to preach better when you come next week, but this is what we need today. I'm justified. Songwriter says, justify me. <laughs> Glorify me, pay my ransom. I've been redeemed by his blood. Go to Calvary. I've been made free despite my enemy. I thank God I'm justified. Paid a price for my life. And all that was wrong, his love made it right. Now what greater sign can any man show that know with his own blood he made me whole? Justify me. Glorify me, pay my ransom, and I've been redeemed by the precious blood of a man. Go to Calvary. Despite my enemy, I should have been dead and never kept alive. God's grace and his mercy were on every side. 
When it looks like I can't, God says I can. And he won't let me fall in the enemy's hand. I'm just glad to know that God saved me, his grace and his mercy. They watched over me all night long. If it had not been for the Lord that was on my side. Listen, I got testimony. Just look like, look at Nineveh that was headed for destruction. God stepped in and he said, not guilty. I like that. You're going to live and you won't see the damn destruction. Just like Daniel who was condemned to the lion's den said, not guilty. You're going to live just like David who was dearly beloved in spite of God said, not guilty. Hey, listen, watch the thing. He says, let's talk about you. If you be honest with yourself tonight, if it had not been for the grace of God, you could have been. You would have been. What's he said? To the liar, not guilty. To the cheater, not guilty. To the deceiver, not guilty. Why should even to the believer, not guilty. Yeah. Justify me. Free me forever. He deals with me on my full potential. Beloved, now are we the full groans of sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. We are already there, but we're, coming, we're getting there. But he that has this hope on the inside is, is working toward. I can only become what God has made me from birth. Moses was a book writer. He wrote the first five books. Moses was a deliverer. Moses was a type of Christ. Moses didn't even know where God was taking him. His parents had only a glyph, but that's why God was pleased. Beloved, God is pleased with you because of where God is going to take you. Did you hear me? I love that about God. I love that about God. Listen, the mo and then watch this here. Moses, at some point, Sister Dietrich, watch this here. And Moses' purpose would eventually catch up with his destiny. Purpose and destiny is going to come together. Please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. People throw you away. People leave you. But God is not through with me yet. I'm telling you, you better stop declaring judgment on your own life. You don't know. You don't have the right to even judge yourself. The Apostle Paul says, I don't even judge myself. My judgment is inaccurate. Baby, you got to see yourself the way God sees you. I'm righteous. I'm holy. I'm faithful. I'm victorious. I'm, I'm a winner. I'm healed. I'm de I declare you to be healed because God says you're healed. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation, a new project, a new assignment, a new development. Watch this here. Do you realize that it's on God to make you what you ought to be? An inoperable. Little baby boy, Sister Mo, a defenseless baby boy, became a man. He became the deliverer of Israel. You don't know what kind of child you got. And watch how you deal with that baby boy. Watch how you deal with that baby girl. And train them in the way they should go. Yes, give them the word of God. But God has put a bit in your child. Do you know some, some children are engineers, but you wouldn't know it. But have you talked to God? Come here. Uh, Jacob, Jacob and Esau were wrestling in their mama's baby. And she prayed. She said, God, what's going on? His mother prayed. And he said, there's two nations on the inside. The one's going to serve the other. They're twins, but they got different destinies. One's going to be great. Though. But listen, have you talked to God about the child that God gave you? Beloved, you need to get educated about what God has given you. There's an engineer in your house. House. There, there, it could be the person that can heal of cancer. They can come. You don't know what God has placed on the inside of that baby. Stop talking down and pull from what God has put within. Develop. Go into the dark room. What's the dark room when they get on our nerves? What's the dark room when they try? What's the dark room? What if they have a kid before time? God has not thrown them away. But with the Q, as a father, we got to let go. We got to let go. The closer I get to God, the easier it is for me to let go. And you know why we don't want to let go, Sister Renee? Because we're controlling. 
I'm going to take you. Because if I take you, we ain't going to get in an accident on the freeway. Mm -hmm. what, if they, what if you let them go and trust them and let them drive by themselves? They might not get in an accident. What if they get in an accident with you driving? Mm -hmm. You got to let them go. Put your hands in the hands of the man that steals the wife. Put your children in God's hands. Moses was being developed as a glove for God to wear. Did you hear? Did you hear? Moses learned how to stand before God by watching his parents. Now imagine this, and I'm almost done. They trained and developed Moses for three months on how to stand before God. And somebody told me that if you learn how to kneel before God, you can stand before anybody. Moses stood before the ruling king of the world because he learned as a baby how to stand before God. Moses, Moses said, I'm exceedingly quick. And he went into the presence of God and shine. And when you walk with God, Sister Mo, when you give your children to God, when you find out what God is doing in their lives, all you are doing is setting, up, setting them up for the busy, busy, biggest success of their life. God has a purpose for Sister Brooke. A passion that goes along with the purpose. A destiny. The text says, eyes haven't seen. Ears haven't heard. The good things, the grand things, the great things that God has prepared for those who love him. I don't care what your sons have done. I don't care what how old they are. The purpose of God is still on for their life. And you know what my mama told me? Now I'm a fully grown man. I got this thing when people get smart with me at work or, or, or on the job. I say, wait, hold, and then don't let them be younger, younger than my son or about his age. I say, hold up, hold up, buddy. My son is your, your, your age. So put some respect on my name. Not R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Put some R-E-S-P. <laughs> put some respect on my name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You heard? <laughs> I can't say that no more. But what am I saying here? My mother told me this, Sister Renee, that I'm still your mother. My, I'm backing off, but I'm responsible for your full development. I talked to a co-worker, I mean, it like this. He said, man, I wish my parents were still here. This guy's almost 60, bro. He said, I wish my mom and dad were here. I just, you know what he said? It's not that I need them to do anything. I just need to hear him say it's going to be all right. I need my mom to say, I need my dad to say it's going to be all right. Everything, every turn, every relationship we have is bringing out the beauty that God has placed within. I don't care how your, your children, your sons, God has a purpose for them being here. And, and it's not too late. Say, God, and always do it right, but show me how to bring out what you place within. This man Moses was a book writer, a deliverer. How in the world does the baby that you deliver is your deliverer? Did you hear me? So our children are made to go further. Children are like an arrow in the hand of a warrior. Pull them back and aim them where God is taking them. Say it again. And let go. Say it one more time. And let go. Am I preaching to myself right now? All right. How is my hands stronger than his hands? How is my mind as brilliant as his mind? I can't always be there. I wish I could. I can't fix every problem, but I can take it to him. <laughs> We're going to end our service there. Bro, and what and do what? Let him go. That ain't easy. You just, when, 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 right, right when, they, when they about to hit the head, you want to just be a pillow. Mm -hmm. All right. Am I talking good, Sister Dietrich? Mm -hmm. But we got it. Little by little. Yeah. As 
as they grow up, we got to grow up. And I guess I ain't ready to grow up tonight. <laughs> Let them go. Hallelujah. We're going to continue this series. We're going to continue to work here. But, 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 but God has a purpose and a plan. We love you. We are praying for you. We want to give you an opportunity to, first of all, come to the God that created you and has a purpose for you, watch this here, and has put everything in you to become all that he's called you to be. You want to know who you are and what your reason is for being? Talk to your creator. Talk to your creator. I challenge you. I encourage you to talk to your God and say, why am I here? Why did you give me these children? Why did you let me move to this neighborhood? Why did you give me this wife? And let God tell the wife, why did you give me this husband? And trust God and see what God, why did you give me this church? See what God does. I want to give you an opportunity to come before him if you need to any assistance as you're making your decision for Christ, you can reach us at 951-234-7941-951-234-7941, or you can email us at info, info at churchbeyond.org. We want to help you. We want to come alongside of you and, and help to bring out what God has put within. That's all we can do, bring out what God has put within, and we want to give you an opportunity to sow in this ministry for our, those that are on social media, you can do so via uh, pay uh, uh, Zell Zell to nine five one five two 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 one two five. You can give via Zell nine five one five two 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 one two five via Venmo at Church Beyond Walls Givelify. Um, just put in address eight seven one West Fourth Street Unity Beaumont California nine triple two three. You'll see us on Givelify. We are, we are a uh, 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 501c3. We not acting like it. We are. You hear me? Not you heard. You hear me? <laughs> yeah, amen. With with the, with the state, we, we 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 good. We good. So we, your your givings are accounted for, and they will be used to do kingdom work. So when it's time to file taxes. You'll be good because you're going to need it. I don't know what kind of new taxes they're going to come up with. So, amen. So, <laughs> and then those of you that uh, uh, would like to give via cash app, all you see, you put dollar sign, church beyond walls, and then you can go, and then you can get, write your check out, write everything to church beyond walls. Amen. It's for the church, the ministry, to do ministry. Amen. Write it to church beyond walls. And then um, just make sure the check uh, goes forward, not going to push back in. You know, be doing acrobatics and all that good stuff. Amen. And then we'll give you an opportunity here to uh, uh, give uh, U.S. currency. Amen. We don't. We have. We're not able to exchange money. So give money that we can. Amen. We love you. We are praying for you. And, it, it, and should you decide to make this your home, we welcome you. We encourage you. And, and listen, watch this here. God wants to use you here. We love you. We're praying for you. We will see you again next week is our prayer.